welcome to Death and Aliens, an in-depth look at horror and sci-fi TV from two friends who vaguely know what they're doing. I'm MK. And I'm Courtney. And somehow I feel like I can never, every time I do the podcast, that sentence gets harder and harder to say, which it's supposed to get easier. Right, right. It's because the more you do it, the more like, it doesn't sound like we're good at it. It, right. It, less it sounds like words and more just like noises coming out of my mouth. Yes. And it's like if you mess it up now, it's like a hundred and gazillion. How many episodes? 70. We're at like 75. Um, you've done 75 episodes. So now if you mess it up, it's like. This actually is episode 75. Excellent. No. No. It's episode 76. Mm-hmm. Ugh. So close. <laughs> so well, close. that means I've done it 75 times before this. Right, right. (laughs) So. Yikes. Good times. So. Do you have anything exciting to share on today's podcast? Um, Yes. Uh, This is, so this will come out a week from now, but my BFF Rachel is flying into New York tomorrow and it is her first time in New York. She's and never been to the city before? She's never been to the city before. I oh know. Oh my gosh, Rachel, have the best time. You'll be home before this comes out, but, like, have the best time. Right. Yeah, she goes home the day before this comes out. <laughs> so, uh, that's fine. Um, but, yeah, and we're going to do the Thanksgiving Day Parade, which I've never mm-hmm. done and I've always wanted to do. And um, I'm sure we'll catch a show if we can make it happen and eat a lot of food. Nice. That's my Very plan. Nice. And, like, take a nap. Because I also get like four days off and I can't be off of work and not take a nap, I feel like. That's fair. So, yeah, um, I'm stoked. A very exciting news, um, which I will uh, discuss again later because it won't happen for a while. But um, I will be working a show next week with Monsieur Adam Pascal. It will be the second show I worked with him, but like never, never gets old seeing that man. No, absolutely not. This is where all of the excitement happens. Um, there are like six people who do my job. There's only like six of us. And I'm the third highest seniority. So like, it's not very high for sick when there's only six of you. Right. And I take whatever shifts I get. Like, I don't care. I'll work anything. So I emailed my boss. And I said, listen, I never ask for specific shifts. I never say, please put me on this. Please put me on this shift. And he said, of course. So on December 11th, I will be working backstage for the Lindsay Sterling holiday tour. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I don't fangirl at work, obviously. So you guys will get just right fangirling here that I can't do there. But like, exactly. I'm gonna be in the same room as that woman and her violin. Ah, I'm so excited! I'm so I'm like getting goosebumps. I'm so excited. I'm gonna cry. Like I'm actually going to cry. I know it's gonna be great. Ugh, maybe she'll do a TikTok with me. Ooh, how fun. Just kidding. I would be way too nervous to ask. Absolutely. I understand. Maybe we get her to promote Death and Aliens. Seems right up her alley, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Sounds like something she'd be super into. Right. I think the only musician that I would freak out more for than Lindsey Sterling would be if there was a pentatonics concert. That would be the only time I'd be less able to handle myself. Yes. uh, They're here today. (laughs) Speaking of pentatonics, I was talking to this guy from Dallas last night and his daughter, it was him and his daughters in town for the week. And they texted him that when they were leaving the Rockettes to say that they gotten tickets for them to do Good Morning America's concert this morning. It was pentatonics. So. Mm, very nice very nice it's good times love those men um i tweeted a picture of mitch grassi one time and was like this and men who look like this are the reason why i'm still single because they're all gay 
and he yeah. liked my tweet, and I've never felt more validated in my life. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. (laughs) That's hilarious. I love it. Um, I don't have a good segue. I was going to say speaking of gay men, but Clancy wasn't in this episode very much. No, I don't. I was going to say speaking of feeling validated, which makes no sense. So it's fine. It kind of makes sense for the end of the episode, but not the beginning. I guess. Yeah. So uh, we have an episode of Dead Like Me, though. That's uh, <laughs> We sure do. That's what we're trying to say and not doing very well at it. Um, this is episode eight, and it is called A Cook. That's it. I know. It's not, it's not a cook like a cook. It's a cook. A cook. Right. And it aired August 15th of 2003. Runtime was 42 minutes, and on IMDb, it just says, George gets a pet, and Rube takes on a shift at Dare Waffle House. That's it. I was like, those things did happen. It was rated 8.0 stars. Yes, it's rated 8.0, which is a little lower than last week, which, like, fair. I did like last week's better, but this one was still fine. I really like this episode. Yeah. Um, Um. Yes. I was just going to say, did, is there any, do we have a new song or movie this week? Um, I was going to say we do not have a new song. It is still Crazy in Love, uh, um, which it will be probably for the rest of 2003, maybe uh, for the rest of the show. We'll see what happens. It lasted <laughs> for a while. Um, but we do have a new number one movie, oh. which is uh, goes well with our horror side. Uh, Freddy vs. Jason came out this long ago. What? Right? That's what it I'm said. So uncomfortable. I know. It feels like it was in like 2008-ish, but when I typed it into number one movie on your birthday, I put in 2003 and Freddy vs. Jason popped up. I absolutely so, believe the internet. My I no longer exists. That is super the truth. Super true. Um, so the director of this episode was Kevin Dowling, which I think this is Dowling. I can't read my own handwriting. Um, which he was also the director of the of the Dead Girl Walking, which was episode two. Oh, okay. So as a reminder, he did things like the Americans, Bosch, Royal Pains, and um, so just a few things here and there that were good. People liked yeah. them. Um, so. We like him. He's fine. The writers are, we have a fun, fun group this week. So, um, of course, Brian Fuller is still listed, even though he's basically out the door at this point. At this point, um, yeah. Yeah. John he'll, Mass. He'll be listed for every episode as the creator. Right, right. And uh, John Massius. So, it's funny that we referred to Touched by an Angel a few episodes back. Because he was the creator of the show and did 211 episodes. And he wrote right? this episode? And this is the first episode okay. he wrote okay, for, but Dead, for Dead Like Me. I will say, this episode of Dead Like Me had a very Touched by an Angel vibe to it. Like, I oh, totally definitely. Feel that. Totally feel that. Yes. Yeah. So I thought that was funny. I don't know if they like knew he was going to write this episode or if they manifested it three episodes ago. But... uh. Which yeah. also, so, side note, speaking of Touch like touch by an Angel and the thing we said a couple weeks ago, um, maybe a few days ago. So for those referencing, this is, today is a, November 23rd, and I think this was either yesterday or the day before. But sometime this week, it showed up in my time hop that it was four or five years since Della Reese died, and I was really upset about it when it happened. Oh, you should have posted it on the Instagram. I should have, but I was at work when I saw it. Yeah, that's fair. I've been at work for three days now. Um, So he also did, I mean, he's very popular other than Touched by an Angel. He also did the show St. Elsewhere, which I haven't seen, but I do know it's very popular. Um, And uh, he also did the Ferris Bueller TV show, which I did not know existed. I don't think should exist. Um, I I agree. I agree because the movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. 
Um, yeah. So now I feel like I need to look up and see what that's all about. I might regret it. I, I think it will be regrettable. Yeah. I'm just very curious now. Mm-hmm. So uh, our other writer is Stephen Gottschall. I guess that's how you say his name. It looks French. Um, fun fact, we have a lot of similarities. So he graduated from Tulane Law School and was a lawyer in San Diego. So for those of you who do not know, I graduated from Loyola Law School, which shares a parking lot with Tulane Law School. We are next door to each other, um, but they don't talk to each other. They're very big enemies. Um, But so that was really cool. And he's a lawyer in San Diego. I'm a lawyer. Technically, I'm licensed in Jersey, but I'm in New York. Um, (laughs) You're you're like, you're not a practicing lawyer. I'm not practicing, but I am a licensed attorney and I will keep my license. And if I decide to be an attorney, I can be. And uh, he, so he ended up producing a lot of these episodes. He was executive producer for 15 episodes and co-executive producer for 10 episodes for 10 more episodes. So he did ended up being on a lot of the show. And he also wrote one episode of Roseanne. Fun fact, just one, just one, but why not add it on? Um, so at this point in time, we're on episode eight and before we get into the show, I just want to start with where the heck is Roxy? We have not seen her now for half of the episodes we've watched. The last episode we saw her on was episode four. True. That is a good point. Um. We have not seen her. We have not heard about her. As far as I know, she does come back on the show. She does. She's not done. So, like, what the heck? Do we get an explanation at some point? Uh, I don't know. I don't remember. I know she comes back. Well... I just want to say I'm a little offended because when I did the quiz, it said that I was most like Roxy and then they just like forgot about her for four episodes and I'm offended for her and I want her to come back because she's a lot of um, endings that haven't been tied up. Yeah, she does. Mm -hmm. Um, Interesting. Interesting. So you can confirm we're not done with her. Yes. Well, I can I can confirm we are not done with Excellent. her. She will okay. be back. Um, I know for a fact that episode 11 of season mm-hmm. one is a big Roxy episode. I don't remember if she comes back between now and then. Well, it's only two more episodes from now. Yeah. I just, I just I, like... I don't remember. I knew she was not in every episode, just like Mason's not in every episode, but I don't remember her being gone from this much. I mean, literally she's been gone for 50% of the episodes that have come out at this point. And she's one of the main characters. She she doesn't leave. She's not done on the show. She will be back. Can confirm. She does also return for the movie. So like not gone. She's still a big part. Yeah. And just, like I said, I'm mad about it. Season one, episode 11 is a Roxy centric episode. So excellent. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to okay. see what happens with her. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we, we can start this episode because I have some confirmation. She'll be back. Yeah. Um, and of course, George is talking mm-hmm. and uh, she's talking about stopping and smelling the roses. And I, I know that this is not super related, but since Sadie was in last, our last episode a lot, it always makes me think of Sadie now because when we walk around the block, there's these orange flowers right before you get back to my apartment that she always needs to stop and smell. And I'm just like, you have to stop and smell the flowers. It is 2 a.m. Go home. But I guess it's important to stop and smell the flowers. So sort of. even though George says she probably wouldn't listen to even if anybody told her. I feel that. Um, so then after she's talking about that, we get to Daisy, who is just <sighs> the worst. They're at the diner at this point, and I just said she's acting very waspy. And uh, I just can't deal with her. 
Um, my note about that scene, though, was that Rube is forever pissing people off. Oh, my gosh. It's like his, that's like his job. Yeah. Um, and we have a new waitress who just shows up who acts like they've been there the whole time. No, she's been there the whole time. Is she the one? I thought she was different. Oh, no, yeah. Casey. No, okay. So there's a couple episodes where there's the African-American woman. But most of the time, Casey, the blonde girl, is the waitress. Oh, I thought it was a different woman, and then they just no. replaced her this episode and didn't tell anyone. No, okay. Casey's back. She just looked different to me. Excellent. She seemed a little more involved, maybe, then. Yes, um, Casey was much more featured this episode than she usually is. Yes, yes. And um, I, at this point, I put, Rube is apparently trying to start a feud with the chef in the back, the cook in the back. And uh, um, it's just, although, so this is... Although I am... One of those people who, like, gets nervous to complain at restaurants. I never complain. Like, my food could be literally mm-hmm. on fire. And I'd be like, it's fine. Thank you so much. That was not going to be cash. It was not. Absolutely not. It looked like salami and rice. I was thinking it was, like, spam and rice is what I was saying. And I was like, this is not no. what we've ordered. In ordered. no universe is that corned beef hash. And if I were as picky as Rube hundred percent would I not only have given it back I probably would have thrown it back yes I mean I never would have thrown it back because I'm a little too mild for that but I definitely would have said something and I normally wouldn't yeah so fair and um this is actually the point where we talked about this last episode about how people see George when they're in her life and I want to bring this up again because Casey says, listen to the little girl and George in her new body looks like a grown adult woman, but in George's body looks like a little girl. I, yeah. That's confusing to me because a lot of people in this episode called her a little girl and I don't know if they mean little in stature. I think this is a plot hole in the writing because these are new writers that haven't written on the show before, even though the director's the same, but he's only done one episode. And the thing is she can't look like George because Dolores and her family would know. Well, that's true, but But this woman is is not a little girl. It's been a while since we've seen Millie, like the Millie face. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think that it's just a plot hole that they're not addressing well. That they're like. Or maybe they just have a very different concept of what a little girl is than we do. Maybe so. Maybe so. I don't know. Because then again, I don't think of myself as being young anymore. I mean, I do. And when my students say things about me being an adult, I get confused that I'm an adult. But like, I don't think of myself as being super young. Like I think of myself as an adult, but I know that there are people who would still call me a little girl. See, I don't think I call people little girl after like 13 or 14. Yes, but you're still in your 20s. There are people who are yeah. 60 look at people in their 20s as little kids still because developmentally yeah. we're not where they are. I guess so. But Casey's not like that much older. I She's say like, things all the time. I'll be like, I say things all the time. I'll be like that kid who was playing that part and knowing full well that this human is 25 years old. Well, that's different, though. I feel like saying calling someone a kid and calling someone a little girl is very different things. I feel like calling someone a little girl is creepy and perverted, and I wouldn't yeah, do it at Yes. Night. Right. That's fair. So that's whether fair. it's a plot hole or a misunderstanding, it's just wrong, and we should stop doing it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, I agree. Um, so, yeah, I want the writers to tighten that up a bit. Anyways, um, so now we've gotten our next assignment for... George and she goes down to the park and God bless. There's these little old ladies there and she's with, she with Daisy yeah. for this one. Okay. Yeah. I, forgot. I didn't write it down. Daisy's Daisy's kind of taking over the Betty role where she's like trying to get George to right. be nicer and like more friendly. And George is like, it's so sad because they're so old. And she's like, we'll make their last moment something really nice then. And, uh, God bless her. So she goes over to these four little old ladies who are sitting there and uh, (laughs) she tells us, she's like, it's one of you, Mrs. Todd. And so Mrs. Todd says, it's me. And she's like, 
there's this gentleman over there that wanted me to tell you, and I quote, how beautiful you are. And these little old ladies, God bless them. Old ladies are like, oh, he has a lot of money. He did this. He did this. And the one girl just goes, I'd fuck him. I was like, do you know you're like 90? Calm down. I got, I got very Sophia Petrillo vibes from that old lady. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, that was a very interesting interaction. And then she just like wanders away. And I was like, okay, you didn't touch your mark. Like you got here to do, take her soul and find who she was. Now you have left her. But then she finds her sitting on a bench with her dog. And she goes and does her grim thing. And she's like chatting with her about her dog and everything. And not yet. Oh, well, yes, but not yet. There's a scene in between the table and the bench. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, this is so. This is the one with uh, Cook. Yeah. And um, I wrote it down. I should look at my notes. I should probably look at refer to my notes when I talk. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we go back to the diner, and Rube's talking to the cook in the back, and he's like, um, you know asking him like what's going on you know like you're not normally like this or whatever like there's something happening and that's why the food's bad turns out he's super poor now because he got into a pyramid scheme oh. and my mlms man not good for anything and mm-hmm. uh so he lost all his money turns out his name is angus cook and he is <laughs> scottish um yes now My note about this is that there's a zero reason, zero reason for Angus to be Scottish, except, except, well, Angus is a Scottish name. I was going to say except his name, but yeah. Right. But the, the making this man Scottish, the entire only purpose was for Mandy Patinkin to do a Scottish accent. Like there's no reason. No, that's absolutely it. I was like, when they add, reason. I literally wrote when they add yeah. random shit just to give Mandy a reason to do accents. That's it. That's what it was for. That's exactly what it's for. I mean, it's not like he's cooking anything Scottish. He doesn't particularly look Scottish. He doesn't have an accent. He's cooking at a German Waffle House diner. Right. Also, why is there a German Waffle House diner? <laughs> Because it's Seattle. But it's Seattle in 2003. So, like, I don't know why it's there yet. But, like, if you come back to, like, 2012, I would, I, I keep, I would say, yeah, I keep that makes mixing sense. up Seattle and Portland in my mind because I'm, oh, like, oh, yeah. Like, of course they do. They're fucking weird because, you know, keep right. Portland. They're, weird, they're still hipster, but they're not Portland. <laughs> That's, it's like, <laughs> a little different. It's, like, on a scale of, like, Seattle or, like, Portland to Orlando. <laughs> Much closer to Portland. Much closer to Portland, yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, so now we're back with the old lady, and she's sitting on the bench, and she's, like, talking to her dog and stuff, and George walks up and starts petting the dog and talking to the old lady and trying to, like, make her have a nice time before she's going to inevitably die. And she takes her soul, and then the dog, J.D., runs away and she goes to chase the dog down and just gets run down by a car. I wrote, what and, a way to die. Like you're already oh a hundred years old. You couldn't die from like old age or like just lung like failure or like just, yeah, no smashed by a truck. Smashed. But she, I mean, she looked pretty spry for an old lady though. So like she probably wasn't going anywhere anytime soon unless she was hit Fair. by a truck. Fair. So, like, that was the only way they were going to get her. It's still a shame, though. You know, of all of the deaths in the show that could have been not ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Although, if she had died in her sleep, it wouldn't have been George's apartment. That's true. That's true. And and I will say, um, they're in the same scene. Um, George is, they're talking about Daisy's trying to guess everyone's age. And she's like, what do you, how old do you think she is? And George is like, I hate this game. I'm terrible at it. And Daisy says, Daisy says, well, how old do you think I am? And she says 35. And I've never like, like felt the same as someone before in my life. I was like, I'm not 35. 
Yeah, it but is. Daisy That's- definitely is. Daisy definitely is, but I'm definitely not. And no. so I was offended with her, even though she had no reason to be offended. But I told my eighth graders I was 16 years older than them today, which is not the first time I've told them my age. And one of them goes, you're 29. I go, you can do addition. Congratulations. You have taught them well. I'm not even their math teacher. Good to know they're uh, coming out of school with some knowledge. Oh, yeah. They can add two-digit numbers. Impressive. Right. And uh, also, she talks about, like, moisturizing her face to keep it that same young face. And I'm like, her face is not that young. This is another, (laughs) I'm going to be frustrated about this throughout the entire series that they don't explain it well enough to when your face looks like your face, because if she's moisturizing it and we haven't seen this new woman's face, we don't know what she looks like in her new body. And I just, I think it's unfair. You have to moisturize. You're dead. Your face isn't changing Um, anymore. Why do you you have to keep moisturizing? You don't. That's the thing. You don't. (sighs) Daisy's a psychopath. She you, know who, just, you know who Daisy is? This episode has taught me who Daisy is. Cassandra. Doctor Who. End of time. Cassandra. Moisturize dying, me. Dying as a flap of skin still needing to be moisture. <laughs> that is absolutely spot on. That is spot I hate on. I hate her. Although Daisy does not look like a flap of skin that is not all dried yet. up, but not yet. But she could. Vanity, vanity <laughs> is not one of the seven deadly sins, but it should be. Yeah. So now back to the old lady's death. She uh, starts following George around. She's like, "What's going to happen to my dog?" And George's like, "I don't know." And she's like, "No, someone has to tell me what's going to happen to my dog." And I felt that like if I died and Sadie was left. Somebody better take her, better take good care of her. I would be devastated. I would help get her to your parents. Right. See, that's all I need. Yeah, I I can't take her because my parents are allergic and I don't Mm -hmm. have my own apartment. And I also don't have the means or capability of caring for another living thing. Right. But I would transport her to your parents for you. I appreciate that. You do have a car, so you would be capable. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad we've straightened this up. So if I die before you die and before Sadie dies, um, just Correct. drive her down. If you die, bef- if I die before you, I can't help. There. I'll get a backup. I'll find a backup. Okay. So, okay. Great. Great. Um, so <laughs> now we get into the point, speaking of taking on pets, because George has decided she'll take care of this dog until it dies. Which- I did say you were just complaining that you don't get to steal things from bad people. Now you get a pet. I think that's a fair trade. Which I would be is small compared to what Mason has stolen. Because we're not there yet. Not there yet. But Mason is still living in old racist Florence's house. Sure enough. Because he they became best friends before she passed and he took all her stuff. My dad was watching the second episode with me. He goes, is that the racist old lady's house? I was like, sure is. <laughs> sure is. It absolutely is. Where else would he be? And uh, yeah, so now we, we start seeing her uh, past pets. She doesn't have a great uh, track record of keeping them alive. Um, Which, to she, be fair, is entirely her fault. Because if you have a bird is. and you name it Tweety when you have a cat that you've already named Sylvester, you're asking for trouble. Yes, and if you give a mouse a jalapeno, like, why? That doesn't even make okay, sense. Okay, listen, if I was 10 and I had a pet named Speedy Gonzalez, I too would assume it was Mexican. Yeah, but a jalapeno, maybe I'd give it, like, a taco. Or, like, there, a tortilla. Well, be, Probably a tortilla. No, but, but, like, jalapeno is vegetables, healthy, duh. I guess. I will say, as a 10-year-old, I gave my Furby sugar because somebody told me you could feed it. You cannot. Let me no. tell you, it will immediately kill your Furby and you will cry for two days because you no longer have a Furby. Um, Furbies and, uh, are demonic. And should well, be 
You can kill if them I had with known, sugar. If I had known that putting fur- sugar inside a Furby would kill it, I would have put sugar in so many Furbies. Mm. Well, now you know. So if you come up against a Furby in the um, times when robots take over, feed it sugar. That, yes. That's my nightmare. That is my nightmare. Isn't it though? Robots taking over the world, but it's all Furbies. It's all Furbies? How great would that be? They just want to dance and they flap their creepy eyes. Oh, no nightmare nightmare fuel get different colored ones some of those are like the bright pink no, sparkles I'm done. Nope, I'm done. <laughs> i would rather i would much rather live in a world where trolls not the movie the actual 1980s trolls dolls mm-hmm. were alive and could talk to me than in a world where furbies could do anything i wish i knew how to do graphic design so i could create this nightmare fuel for you but unfortunately, I cannot, and I don't have the money to pay someone else to do it. So I'll just try to write it in words one day and make you visualize it. Um, yeah. So now we move on to how Reggie kills animals. Um, Joy is smart enough to give her a dog. Like, she's doing the same thing. She's losing all these pets. And finally, oh, this was... Hold on. Which one was Reg? Which one did Reggie kill? Reggie killed a gerbil because she threw it in the That's toilet. Right. That's right. So she could teach it how to swim. I um I do recall that now. I was saying Joy was smart for not giving um George a dog. That's when she gave her Tweety though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, me not following my notes, <laughs> but I did think it was really funny during that scene because she was like. Whenever the cat immediately choked and died, it was like a murder-suicide pact between Sylvester and Tweety. My dad was like, man, you got them both. You just knock them right out. And now that's all I can think of is if they had a murder-suicide pact in, like, one of the cartoons. Poor granny. Right? Oh, she'd be devastated. Speaking of speaking of Looney Tunes, the voice of Foghorn Leghorn died this week. That's so sad. And I was sad too. My mom's reaction was, "He was still alive." Okay, that's a fair reaction, though. I mean, <laughs> it's been a minute. He's been around a minute, so that is fair. Um, but that is sad he died. Um. So now we pop over to Rubes for a half a second and we see him walk inside, pick up some papers and then run out the door yelling about something and then running back in and shutting his door. Yes. And it's the number 41. Yes. Right. What, hap- what had happened was got the list, looked at it, saw something that pissed him off and went and told death that he was a piece of shit. And mm-hmm. I, because I, I'm a writer and a TV aficionado knew exactly in that moment what had happened. Yes, it was uh, well foreshadowed, Um, which is also one of my predictions for the future. I think it is also foreshadowing something else. Um, So we see the door number 41. Is that the same one that they put the sticky note on? Yeah. So then it was not Betty's door then. No. No, 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 no. Rube left the note for death. Death, oh. death drops the lists off to Rube. So Rube left a sticky note on his door as a note to death. And ask what happened. I see. I, I misunderstood that. Oh. But yes, no, that makes sense. 41 now. is Rube's apartment. See, I thought he left that for death on Betty's door. I didn't realize it was on his own door. I see. Yes. That, that makes more sense. Okay. Um, like inner office mail, Rube's door. Right, right. Yes. Um, so now we go back to the diner. And Mason is yet again trying to hit on Daisy, even I though said, he says he's not. I said, Mason, get over it. Right. You're clearly been working together for the rest of time. Because you don't have a um, death date. Mason also got turned down for a print ad. He was not even handsome enough to be in a print ad. 
And Rube says, maybe it's your accent. He said it was a print ad. He's like, mm, not the accent. <laughs> Dead. I was like, what a burn. Oh, gosh, that was so funny. Um, but now this is when we see why Rube was so upset with the papers at his door. Because the name listed is A. Cook, who we learned roughly 15 or 20 minutes ago, is Angus Cook. And he is the cook at the diner they've been going to for ages. It's the only, it seems to be the only person we know of that Rube has made a connection with ever, other than this mysterious person that he has dinner with that's not mm-hmm. there. And so... Quite upsetting. Yes. And we also see how differently he handles it than, say, Roxy. Who tried to oh. save the guy she had a connection with. And here's the thing. Rube, it, I like it. Because I like that we get to see that Rube isn't as heartless as he appears to the others. He has a moment. He's not okay. He's angry. But then when push comes to shove, he does the job. He walks he away. Still he still has to do his job. He walks away. He says, I couldn't watch this one. I couldn't stay. But he does his job. Like, he, he mm-hmm. is sad. And we get to see that he has a heart, but he isn't as incompetent as George and Roxy. Right. Right. Which is why he's in charge. Why he's middle management. Yep. So, uh, yeah. So then we, we go back to talking about this dog that we have, JD. And they're talking about, what does JD stand for? She says, could be Jack Daniel. <laughs> That she liked to drink a lot. And she was like, I don't think so. And then I was like, okay, hold on. We met the ladies at the park. It could absolutely be for Jack Daniels. Mm. Would not be surprised. If it was, I'd fuck him, lady. Maybe. Mrs. Todd? I don't think so. But this is her crew. The lady could have been like, yeah, name him Jack like- Daniels. She was like, I don't think so. I'll name him JD. You know? Yeah. No, could have. But like, you know how like there's always that one who's like a lot nicer than her friends? Right. Mm-hmm. That was Mrs. Todd. Definitely. And then I was like, like what if it's JD like from Mrs. Scrubs? Mrs. Todd, Mrs. Todd was Kate. Mm-hmm. And then and the Asian lady theory. was the Asian lady was you, and the other one was Montana, and the I'd fucking was me. Like that's mm-hmm. where we're at. Yes. That makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Um <laughs> yes, when we're a thousand. Watch out. <laughs> My light just went out. Oh, it's okay. okay. I just have to plug it into my computer. I'll just We're just dark. having some uh, technical Continue. difficulties today. All right, absolutely. So then George is talking about their jobs and what they have to do. And she's like, it kind of sounds like we're hitmen. We get our description, we go get them, and then it's like over. She's like, but we're not really. And I was like, hold up. No, you are really. Like, That's you're doing the same thing. That's like actually literally what you do. Right, like hitmen don't choose who they kill. They get mm-hmm. assignments, they go take them out, and then they go on with their lives. Yeah. And that's exactly what you're doing. But the difference is hitmen don't get emotionally attached, and you clearly do. Right, even though you're not supposed to. So you need to take some cues from hitmen and do better. That's, what, that's what's happening here. Be a better hitman. Yes, be a better hitman. That's our, our uh, announcement for this episode. Yes, I do better. Right. At killing people. What? Yes. But don't kill people. No, don't kill people. <laughs> so now we go back to the diner and we see Angus. And they really revved up this uh, death scene of like, what's going to happen? Like, I felt a little bit on edge. And I knew he was going to die, but I was like, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? It was like, they just kept drawing it out. Yeah. Is it going to catch on fire? Is it going to blow up? Is it going to be a gas leak? Like, what is going to happen? He chokes on a sandwich. Which, of course he does. Right. I was like, out of all of the things, of course, that's the one that gets him. Yeah. So that's all sad. And um, we knew it was coming. But now we're back at George with the dog. And uh, God bless her. She's trying to find a place to stay. Hold on. No, no, no. We didn't even talk about why she needs a place to stay. She goes yes. home with her dog. 
And Daisy is like, oh, you can't bring the dog inside because I have nice clothes and golden retriever shed. Oh, and also I'm allergic. And I'm just like, you're undead. You're I not going to die. I don't. I said, um, fuck you. And but then George just walked away and let her have it. And then I got pissed off at George. I was like, grow right. a fucking pair. It's your apartment. You pay the rent. Mm-hmm. You can bring a dog if you want. Get her out. Of th- I was, oh, I went off. Daisy went- needs a new place. Mm-hmm. But mm. without, without this, we would not have had our next two um, homestays that we come upon. So first up, <laughs> we, uh, we go knock on a good old Mason's Florence's house door and she's like shows up with the dog and he just lets her in and God bless him. He is right at home. Even though he's got a guest over, he shows up with some underwear that has the union Jack on the back of it and a tight shirt. And he's just wandering around. No, and she had no shirt. He was, but you have no shirt at that point. He mm-hmm. was fully just wearing mm-hmm. his underwear, which were too tight. Only covered one of his butt cheeks. I had a favorite scene this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked. Shocked <laughs> that it was Callum Blue almost naked that got you. <laughs> oh. I just was like, this is the most ridiculous thing. I was like, of course he's wearing. My note just says, more butt for me. (laughs) I felt like George. I was on on point with George where I was just hella annoyed. I was like, she's not going to get any sleep. She's not going to get any, like, he's not even going to leave her alone. uh, Shocker, he doesn't. So, um, she goes back to, so we catch up with her at work the next day and she's asleep on her desk because she did not get sleep at Mason's. And her coworkers are sticking little stickers all over her. And I was like, how old are you? You're not even friends. That's- I was like, you don't. I was like, if you knew her, like, maybe, like, some of the girls I work with then, the bar. If I fell asleep at the bar, I could see a couple of them, like, putting stickers on me. Not as much, because that feels like a lot of work. But some. Um, but... They don't even know these people. Yeah. Fully, if I fell asleep at work, Teresa would do something like that. Mm-hmm. But also, I wouldn't care if she did it. Right. Right. But, like, if somebody else at work did it, I'd be like, we're not friends. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt for George. I was like, they're not your friends. Why are they bothering you? And also, so course, I, the post-it notes on her fingers and her face and her forehead, whatever, the ones in her hair, unacceptable. Uh, right? Why would you put anything in anyone's hair ever? No. Ugh, no. So then we have good old Dolores pops up. And uh, she's, like, kind of fussy because she's asleep on the job. But then she's like, why are you so tired? Is there something you need to talk about? And so she's, you know, giving her her whole sob story of I've got this dog, nowhere to go. I've been staying at a friend's house and I didn't get any sleep. And she says, is he skeevy? And she says, no, he's English. And she says, and she goes, oh. oh. <laughs> and I laughed so hard because a thing I've learned about the Irish, they don't care for the English. <laughs> and so I work in an Irish bar. Anytime we've had anyone come in who's English, they're just like, oh, I hate that table. I don't want to deal with it. So, like, it was really funny that she's just like the English. Oh, okay. I get it now. Which I had a very different reaction to that. But it's because when I was in England, I was just walking down the street and these guys walked by in onesies and were like, come to our flat. So, of course, we did. Oh my gosh, you should have been killed. Well, and then we just got really drunk and hung out with them all night and then went to a club. And, like, it was great. But also, I fully know exactly the type of person she's talking about when she says, no, he's English. Because I know that person. You should have died. I'm glad you didn't. 
I'm glad you didn't we were, die. But... We were in a big enough group that we were protected. It was not just like me by myself. It was okay. like a group of us. And we, it was not only girls in the group. Okay, well, that's that's a little better then. It when you said still, that, I was like, it was, it's you and one friend. And no, I like, no, no. I mean, by the end of the night, it ended up being just me and one other friend. But I was sober and I did not leave until I could get her safe. At least but, you were smart about it in a yeah. not so smart situation. And by, and by sober, I mean, I was not blacked out. I was not so- those are not the same thing. <laughs> Those are not the same thing. <laughs> I was at a club in London. What did you expect? I don't know. I just want you to not die. That was nine years ago. So we're good. Glad you made it out alive. Me don't too. Do it again. I would never. Gracious. Goodness gracious. <sighs> so. <laughs> Back to where people die for good reasons, I guess. We come back and I just put, oh no, Cook didn't follow the light because he is still at the diner after Rube takes on his shift. Because Rube's he like, wants to- Casey's like, we don't have a cook. And Rube's like, I don't want to cook. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he's like, I'll be, I'll be the cook here at this diner. And um, turns out Angus Cook didn't follow his light he did not because rube left him and he didn't go anywhere he just stayed there to see what was going to happen and uh now they get to cook together and uh he's getting fussed up but before we finish up with cook and rube we go to um george's next sleepover she decides which, she doesn't trust Mason alone with JB. Which fair. Although I don't trust Mason alone with himself. Like he needs his own like babysitter. Although so. in what universe would Mason bring the dog into the hot tub with that much champagne? He doesn't have money for that. That's true. That would be the reason why. It wasn't because he wouldn't. It was because I was like, he couldn't. No, he does not have that kind of money. Right. Unless it was already at Florence's. Maybe she had some stash. Judy Judy just passed away and had 13 cases of wine at her house. So, (laughs) yeah. So, like, does does Florence seem like the kind of old lady who would have a hot tub? Maybe not a hot tub, but I could see her having, like, Prosecco. Oh, oh, for sure, the Prosecco. She was drunk at all times. Right. I don't know about I don't know. I don't know about a hot tub. She doesn't like people enough. You usually have that when you like want to hang out with people. Yeah. Maybe there's one next door. Mason does not know boundaries, so. Absolutely not. Yeah. I think it was just smart. I would not trust Mason with anyone's life, yeah. other no one's life, not even his own. Um Well, he did put a drill through the back of his head. So. Exactly. And that's why we're here. Yep. So um she moves in with Dolores. <sighs> I was like, that's your next pick? Out of all of the people you go to, I would go to a stranger first, I think. Dolores is and, a cracker. <laughs> oh my gosh. She is she says She says something that I cannot believe was came out of her mouth, came out of any writer ever's mouth. She said, you're not the first stray I've taken in. And the homeless are passionate lovers, but they will rob you blind. Can you see where I wrote that exact sentence in my notes? Because I was also floored by that. I was like, are you kidding me, Doris? It's like, I can't believe, of all people, you just like take in all these people you don't know. She's got a I uh, I'm, story I'm, unsur- I'm unsurprised that she takes in random strangers. Mm-hmm. What I am surprised by is that she is shagging homeless people. Right. Right. She, I mean, I guess with her coke habit that she used to have, <laughs> maybe it was just a thing that happened. I don't even know. She's a, a an anomaly. She's her own person. I, she, she might not do coke anymore, but she's 100% on Adderall. She's on 
at least a few things. Um, like that, that woman snorted speed. I'm telling you. Right. I mean, why else would we learn while we're towards the end of this uh, sleepover that we got to get things done with Dolores because she's on camera because this woman has a web show where she just does things. She cleans things always active and uh she leaves it on all the time while she's asleep like it's weird enough that you have a webcam of you making puzzles and washing dishes but then she doesn't turn it off and she didn't even tell george till like three or four hours later i was like what is going this is which granted maybe washington has single party consent laws and you don't have to Tell someone you're filming them. But. I bet they don't. Still. Mm, let's see. Does Washington <laughs> State have single party consent <gasps> No. Oh, see, I told you. Washington is a two-party consent law mm-hmm. state. That was illegal. Right? She moved from Coke to filming people. She just picks her illegal battles for the year. I wonder what she'll do next. Who knows? Um, so, George, again, didn't get any sleep. Because who's going to sleep when you know a webcam's on you all night? Because that's creepy. And, uh... So we, we come back to um, Rube and Daisy. And I'll, I'll admit, I don't remember what was happening here. Because all I put down was Daisy's statement. They were wandering, wandering somewhere. And she says, I did once blow Babe Ruth. And Rube just says, who hasn't? And I was like, what is this conversation? I was like, where on earth does this fit into anything we're talking about? I said, I don't know whose life I would hate having more right now. Rube epically failing at cooking all of the time and having a ghost scream at him. Or George being filmed while sharing a bed with her boss who webcams herself sleeping. Absolutely, George. I would absolutely hate that the most. But at least there's a bed in that situation. Yeah, but at least he's, like, friends with Cook. Like, even though he's getting yelled at, they are friends. Yeah. And, like, so I, and it lasts a shorter amount of time. But also, Dolores said, you're right, Dolores said that, like, she wished that she could have made her website her big website. But then she didn't want people with a fetish to watch it. What? Who do you think is watching it now? Right. Like, no, I just, she's something else. So we, uh, Dolores has finally pushed George over the edge. She has reached all of her limits and she just storms into the diner And she yells at Daisy to just get out of her apartment. She's done with it. She has to find her own place. And then she yells at Mason. And then she just walks away. And I was like. My favorite is that she yelled at Mason for putting the dog in a hot tub. And and Daisy was like, what? And he was like, absolutely not. I know. And it wasn't even a, I'm Mason and I'm on drugs, so I don't know what's going on. It was a, I literally have never heard those two words in the same place before. (laughs) I just, she's lost it. She reached her limit and she was like, this is it. Gotta go. Which like, I was like, honestly, thank thank God for Dolores pushing her to that level because like, (sighs) I know somebody had to. Right. Maybe it wouldn't have gone that far. It shouldn't have gone that far for her. Like I would have probably been done long before ending up on a webcam in my boss's oh, house. Oh, no, I would have been done the second but, The second Daisy told me I couldn't bring a dog into my own apartment. That's when I would have been right. like, okay, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would have been done the minute Daisy tried to steal my bed while I was <laughs> sleeping in a chair. Um, 
But now we see Cook giving Rube some pointers about how to deal with a rude customer. And Rube goes up to this customer and discusses the ins and outs of what a patty melt is. And he's telling him he's wrong. He's like, you want me to make you a grilled cheese? He's like, no, I want a patty melt. He's like, that's not what you're asking for. (laughs) It's like, that's not how that works. And he also, okay. The customer deserved it. Mm -hmm. Customer said, why would it be called dare patty melt? If there wasn't sauerkraut on it. I'm sorry. Do you just assume that because something has a German word in it, there has to be sauerkraut on it? What kind of racist bullshit is that? I was like, what? I was like, dare just like and like do you put sauerkraut in a do you put sauerkraut in a black forest cake right bitch he just mm -mm, deserved it so rube tossed the patty melt at him and said it's on dare house (laughs) i thought that was so funny and that's all the cook needed to move on into the light. It was like, and then that, that this is the moment that I said that this episode was kind of touched by an angel light because he couldn't fully mm-hmm. really pass over until Rube had learned the lesson. Because right. like, Rube, Rube had been atta- antagonizing toward Cook, and Cook was like, You don't know what it's like. And then he died. But then he got to live to see Rube learn the lesson. And I was like, This, that's this it. Mm-hmm. I get it. I get it. I yep. can see how these two are related now. <laughs> right it is the exact same plot <laughs> <laughs> with a lot more swearing right right yeah not a whole lot of swearing and touch by an angel <laughs> much more calm and uh caring um definitely so, caring. You know, not always calm but definitely right. caring so uh george has already decided she's kicked daisy out but little does she know dolores is going to kick her out because yeah. Her ratings have gone down because they kept saying nothing got done. George wasn't doing anything. And they, they called didn't. her the, the viewers called George uninspiring. Yeah. So she's like, I'm sorry, but my ratings have gone down. And I was just like, once you've told someone you're filming them, getting things done, which just means cleaning constantly things that are unnecessary. I would have left. You don't have to kick me out. It's, yeah, no. it's over at that point. So then George kind of, we kind of start winding down at this point. And uh, George is talking about wandering and she's talking about it being some people's way of life. And I just connected so much with that. Yeah, me too. Because that is all I do. I just, in between my jobs, I have to, I wander, I walk around constantly and that's how I clear my head. And I, but I also, I also took it like less in the actual walking way, but like, I have never like stayed in the same place or kept the same job or done the same thing. I just kind of like let life happen. Just, Which is also things I've wander. done. I just wander. We'll mm-hmm. see. I don't know. People ask me what I want to do next. Like, where do I think my life's going or what do I want to do next? And I genuinely could not tell you. It will happen when it happens. I get a guy last night. He uh, told me his son was an attorney in the city. I was like, oh, I'm licensed. I'm a licensed attorney. And he looked at me like I had like four arms because I was working at a bar. I was like, I worked in law for a few years. That's not it. (laughs) I was like, it's just where I'm at right now. He was just like, distraught that that was my response and I was just like it's just kind of where life has taken me at this point and it's okay everything's okay um so we finally found good old JD at home George drops her off at her parents house and Reggie and Joy take this dog in well Joy takes the dog in and she goes into Reggie's room the dog is in the bed. Reggie is on the ground. And she's asking her about if she's going to continue to sleep on the ground and not get in the bed. And then she asks her what she thinks JD stands for. And she says, just dog. Just dog. I was like, oh, 
I bet that's what Mrs. Todd meant. I know. This dog. It was so sweet. And Joy says, you know, I actually like that. I know. So we've had a connection now with uh, Joy and Reggie are kind of starting to calm down. George is starting to get her life together. We have this nice small Scottish burial for our good friend, Angus Cook. Rube shows up on the outskirts because he has to, he wants to be a part of it without being part of it. And I just put poor Rube. He's been through so much. But also like, again, how do we put a scene of Mandy Patinkin smoking a pipe and walking away solemnly in a graveyard into an episode? Oh, I know. We have a funeral. Because while I understood the emotional weight, the visual far outweighed the emotional in that moment. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Although I did get a little emotional for Rube. I just, I just feel bad for him every episode. But the thing is, we already had the moment. Like, when he goes back to the kitchen and he's not there anymore. Like, we already had the moment. We didn't also we, need right. the funeral, except for that we had to put that is their going out scene. With a pipe. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted it for the, the scene visual. Um, yeah. And that's how it ended. On a not quite as sad a note as we normally have. It was like a breath of fresh air moving on. We've all kind of settled down a bit. We can move yeah. on to the next phase. We got um, to see you have a soul. So here's some trivia for you. I love um, trivia. This one's not great. But <laughs> so when they're in the, um, the diner, Rube says, Mama Cass choked to death on a sandwich. And it turns out that Mama Cass was an overweight woman who was said to have choked on a sandwich because she was overweight. But it turns out that she actually had a heart attack that was unrelated. And they tried to print that and everyone overlooked it and just kept saying that she died from eating a sandwich. Which, again, obviously not cool. But again, I think that's one of those things where, like, Rube is probably of the age where that was. Right. Like, that was the thing. Right. Well, I definitely, I definitely think that's it. Although, but that was like, the connection when is, for us. When is, we got, oh, interesting. What, how old is Rube? I don't know. A gazillion. Because in the last episode, um, episode seven, mm-hmm. when... Daisy was complaining about a used car. Rube says something about his first car and how it was actually a buggy. Yeah. And he was already a Reaper when Betty died in the 1920s. Right. So Rube is um, born at least in the 1800s. You'd have to be pretty old to be middle management for death, like to be death's closest connection for your city. So like, He's got to have been around for a while. I know. And uh, so our next, this is a fun piece of trivia. Um, Rube shows that he knows the diner lingo by saying, burn one on the hoof and hold the breath. And this means, and Kit, do you know what that means? No. Do you want to guess? No. Ugh. <laughs> So burn one means like a burger or a piece of meat yeah. and uh, on the hoof means done rare mm-hmm. and then hold the breath means no onion. I get it. Makes sense. So a rare burger, no onion. Oh, nice. I thought that was fun. I always want to know diner lingo, I bet it's really cool, but I just don't know any of it. I, I don't care. Except for Waffle House, smashed cats and something. Capped is mushrooms. So I always yes. get capped. Smothered is gravy. Smothered and capped. That's what I like. Because one of them, um, I don't know what there is, is, if it's scattered maybe for onions. I don't like that. Mm. I don't like the onion part. But yeah, I do. Yeah. So, uh, man, I haven't been to Waffle House in forever. I used to go all the time in college because it was, I mean, like one of the four places we had. And it was the only place open after like 11. Oh, yeah. Um, but I also haven't been in a very long time. Um, Last time I tried to go to Waffle House, there was a line. Like a, like an hour oh. late. Yeah. Why? 
I don't know. It was like a Sunday morning or something. Oh, Ugh, yeah. that's awful. Um, so who do you want to punch in the face this episode? Ugh, I don't, I really think it's going to get boring if I pick Daisy every week. It will get boring, but also, she's the worst. Yeah. Um, Mm, But also Dolores a little bit. Yeah, I think my pick is going to be Dolores for filming George without telling her. And also being like, you're my guest. You have five seconds to get settled in. Now we're going to clean the entire apartment that's already clean. And like, she knows she just needs to go to sleep. She's there because yeah. she needs a nap. Yeah, no, it's a it's a mess. So, ugh, so who's your MVP this episode? Angus. Oh yeah, my MVP is JD because oh. I love him, and he just he's so sweet. He just goes along with whoever wants to have him wherever. And then he's he brought Joy and Reggie together in the end. That's true. I just Angus helped us help Rube remember that he has a part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Um so do you have any predictions? I think. Mm-hmm. Bless you. Thank you. I think we are going to get some more group info. I think we have to. We they've opened him up enough now that like we gotta we gotta know something. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, so I think soon we're going to get something about Daisy that makes us not hate her as much. I hope so. Because she can't be getting good. Like people can't be liking her. Cause like Betty had her flaws, but she was still lovable. Right. Daisy has nothing. No. Um, and it's and now this has been three episodes where with Daisy having no redeemable. We're just annoyed with her. Yeah. If she is to continue for the rest of the show. Which it she seems has. to be the case. Mm-hmm. She will be. Um, there's, she's got to be, have something. She has to have something. She doesn't have to be yeah. as lovable. Like even Roxy, right, right. even Roxy in her lovableness, it's from a rough place. She doesn't have to have a perfectly cohesive relationship with George. There has to be some redeeming quality if I'm going to watch another 20 episodes right. of her. Like, us watching her, we have to not hate her as much as we do. Because, like, right. I've never hated Roxy, even though she's been rough, you know? Like, right. Like, and, like, fine. even though, and though, even though, like, there was the one moment in episode seven where uh, Rube, when he was yelling at George, was, like, you know, that rage and that feeling that basically anger is the only thing holding your stomach to your butt. That's how I feel every day when I'm around you. Like... <laughs> Even something like that, we don't hate Rue. Right, right. And uh, there's got to be something for us. Like, George doesn't have to like Daisy, but we have to stop hating her so much or else it's going to exactly. be a rough, a rough 20 episodes. Truly. Um, I also have another off-the-wall kind of big prediction for, like, the mm-hmm. end. Because yeah. um, I'm trying to figure out how this is going to get tied up in the end now that I'm, now that I'm you know, eight episodes into my... Oh, 29 yeah, for episodes. sure. Um, well, 29 I'm episodes wondering. and a movie. And a movie. Which, to be fair, I'm, I've never seen the movie. Ooh, that'll be a fun time. Um, so I have a prediction that at some point towards the end, it won't be anytime soon, that George is going to have to send one of her family members. She's going to have to take one of their souls. Because we've lined it up where we see Roxy's closest person. We've seen... Um, as of now, Rube's closest person, and he has this other thing happening that I feel like he had to take like a wife's soul or something. And so I feel like George is gonna have to take someone that's really close to her, like her mom or Reggie's soul. Somehow I feel again, I like I said, I've never I've never seen the movie. I don't know how things actually end. 
I feel as though there has to be some kind of rule against leaving your own family. I don't know though. Like that, that seems like a, that seems like even Rube couldn't do that to you. Unless Rube already had to do that because death right, makes the rules. But, Rube but doesn't. Do, right. But Rube, no, but I mean, Rube hands out the post-it notes. He could give it to Mason instead of George. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. think he, I don't think he would do that. Yeah, unless it was like one of those situations where it's like, I want the last thing to be that like she sees who I truly am before she's gone, you know? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, but I think if it happened anytime soon, George wouldn't be ready for something like that. And so Oh no, be. I think it would definitely uh, be like No, but I mean end. like I mean like in George's development as a reaper. Like mm-hmm. say her mom is ninety five. Right. Maybe. But like if it happened next week, Rue would be like not ready. Right, right. No, I think that's yeah, I agree with that. Um but I wonder. I think something's mm. gonna have to come up emotional like that at some point. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. So that's uh that's my predictions. Um I don't have a lot else to say other than Thanksgiving's in two days and I am not ready. But uh that's mm-hmm. two days from when we're recording this, obviously, not when it comes obviously, out. Obviously, it's a week ago um, now. But um, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving, everyone. This episode will come out on December 1st. Oh, my gosh. We're, like, done with 2021, basically, now. Weird. Ugh, I'm already yeah. tired. No, we are not, not right. even hit the holidays yet. Not ready. Mm-mm, mm-mm. If it would skip to June, I'd be good. Oh no, I don't want the heat. Ugh, I just, I, I just want to break. break. Right here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I took off a week. I got this week, but like, yeah, yeah, but you only get like three days this week. That's not a lot. I, I am taking a week in in December probably going home who knows <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> when are you coming here when my job lets me take more than two weeks a year off uh, fair. Um. <laughs> or it's a long holiday weekend maybe <sighs> or you could just come here i'm going there in april i know i can't wait oh we can We're record gonna- in person if I have money, let's see. Let's not make any promises. <laughs> Look, I don't have any days off, so maybe I'll have money and I can just like <laughs> find us some good tickets to Broadway. Just... Right. I'll just pay for you to come to me. Well, if you guys would like to fund our reunion, um, you can send money. Actually, I don't we don't have a PayPal, but like you could message no, us. We don't. And tell us you want to send us money and we'll figure out how to make that work. I think you can Facebook money people. Is that still a thing? It is, I think. Also, you, you I, can Facebook us money if we figure out how to use it. Or like, is there like, can we like set up a donate link on YouTube? I don't know how YouTube works. <laughs> I don't like YouTube coins. Is that a thing? Uh, no idea. Um, all I know is that we are not monetized because we do not have enough subscribers. I don't know exactly. It's really unfortunate. Um, so subscribe. We're just hanging on with our one sponsor, Anchor. Subscribe and send us money and all of those things. And even if you don't have money but you just like us, send us attention on social media. And tell the people about us. Share. Definitely. Um, you can follow us on all of the social media platforms at Death and Aliens. And you can follow me at E-M-K-A-Y underscore superstar. And you can follow me at cecloud13. Hopefully your winter is going well. And we will see you all next week. See ya.